So welcome everyone to the last week of uh, batch six prayers and meditations by the mother. So we'll ha we have this uh, prayer with us today, January 31st, 1914. And we also had uh, the talk by Dr. Alok Pandey, again, beautiful talk and elaboration upon the prayer. So um, yeah, let us begin by sharing our reflections, either from something if you like from the talk itself, and our own personal reflections and the prayer uh, on the prayer. Yeah. So anyone who wants to go first, maybe one can read the prayer and then go ahead. Good evening, Monica. Can I read? Yes, yes, please. January 31st, 1914. Every morning, may our thoughts rise fervently towards thee, asking thee how we can manifest and serve thee best. At every moment in the manifold choices which we can make and which, despite their apparent insignificance, are always of a great importance, since according to our decision, we become subject to one category of determinism or another. At every moment, May our attitude be such that thy divine will may determine our choice and that, and that thus it may be thou who directest our entire life. According to the consciousness in which we are when taking a decision, we become subject to the determinism of the order of reality in which we are conscious. Whence the consequence often unforeseen and troublesome that are contradictory to the general orientation of one's life and form obstacles which are sometimes terrible to overcome data. Therefore, O Lord, divine master of love, we want to be conscious of the and be alone, be identified with thy supreme law. Each time we take a decision, each time we choose, so that it may be thy will which moves us, and that our life be thus effectively and integrally consecrated to thee. In thy light we shall see, in thy knowledge we shall know, in thy will we shall, we shall realize. So when I was reading this prayer, I realized how profound, what profound knowledge and truth Mother is saying to us here, that how much is it important to be vigilant and do, um, I would say, right choices, or not right choices, but be always connected to the divine will. So if you go through the prayer, you see that mother is praying to the divine every morning so that our thoughts be connected to thee and, and to divine will. And she says every time in our life, we faced with many full choices. And like, you in every day you have you you make a choice how you react what you speak what you do how you pass your day and that choice uh people think that despite of apparent insignificance like we don't think that it is important in what state of consciousness i I mean, say something or I react in something. Mother says they are always of great importance. People miss this out because they see how does it matter? For today I say like this, but tomorrow I will be better or something like this. Or you will say that in the beginning I offer my uh, whole day to the divine. Then in between it is I can I can relax a little bit. I can uh, do this, do that. Of course. 
for the first thing is good that you offer your day to the mother. But if since you're proceeding, then it becomes very important to be conscious every moment. And then she's saying it's always of a great importance because she says that according to our decision, uh, we become subject to category of determinism or another. For example, if somebody, uh, you are angry at someone, so it's state of consciousness at which you decide to be angry or allow yourself to be angry. So you are determined on the, to the vital forces. And you are, mother says that you are, has to face the consequence of that and difficulties and troubles of that. So, and if you choose to be connected to the divine will, then you, uh, I mean, you are, not facing many vital, let's say, difficulties, because you are not going to that order, what is she, mother is saying that, where well, she's saying that order of realities. Uh, she said, we become subject to the determinism of the order of realities in which we are conscious. So let's say we are in a vital world, we are getting angry. So we are conscious of that vital forces and we are subjected to that vital forces. Hence, when Mother is saying that let's us pray every morning so that we always be in the right state, take the right choice, so that we don't have to later on, she's saying that when we are, let's say, we are subjected to some wrong, I mean, not wrong, but vital realities, which is contradict to our life aim, and life orientation, then what happens that we have to face troubles and we have to overcome obstacles. Sometimes stable, mother is saying, that uh, because you are uh, and then often unforeseen and troublesome consequence of that. So it's, mother says that people don't understand that apparent insignificance of uh, choices which you are making, but it's of a great importance. So I found it is so profound knowledge that mother is explaining us here that how much it is important every second, every, not every second, but every time you make a choice to be connected to the divine will. And then she says that, so uh, that at every moment that we will be guided by thee. That's, that was a uh, very important insight, which I realized through this prayer that how much it is uh, important in our development, inner development. I think that is what I wanted to share today. Yeah, thank you so much, Lupu. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so I think this is the aspect of sincerity. And yeah, I'm hoping we'll touch upon it again. Very important. Yes. Um, so anyone who wants to go next? Namaste, uh, Dr. Monica. Yes, Rashmiji, namaste. Please go ahead. This is really uh, profound. And again, the mother has, uh, every time she has given the key. What I understand here is that every choice that we make, every choice, in the crossroads of life, every choice that we make, though they look insignificant, but they are of great importance. So she is saying that every moment, we must be in our highest consciousness. And in such an attitude,
that we pray that her will, thy divine will may determine our choice. So we must be, all our choice must be determined by the divine. So that she can direct our life. And if you go, if we take a decision, take a choice as per our whims or as our fancies, then we have to also bear the consequences, which may be actually unforeseen and may be troublesome. And maybe also it may be contradictory to the general orientation of our life. And I recollect uh, the talk by uh, Dr. Alok Pandey where actually, you know, he is talking about uh, King uh, Yudhisthir, uh, you know, how he was uh, well led by, you know, that moment's uh, choice in that uh, game of, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, the, in the court of uh, Dhritarashtra, where he had to keep uh, his brothers, uh, uh, Draupadi uh, at stake during that Satranj game of dice. So he was a good man, but at that moment it was not his best of his consciousness. How come he uh, he he did all that uh, decision at that moment, and that completely changed the course of his life as well as the lives of uh, his clan completely. So that's he's saying that it can be uh, really troublesome and it is contradictory to the general orientation of one's life. So that was not what uh, King Yudhisthira was. So the key that he is giving here that we must be really, you know, conscious of thee and thee alone. We must be always conscious of his presence. We must we identify his supreme law at each time we take a decision, each time we choose. It must be his will that moves us. And every morning, we must always wake up with that thought that we must manifest him and serve him. Thank you. Yes. Thank you so much, Rishmi. Yes. Today we will watch Monica. Okay. Okay, Chitra. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah, so if Rakhi and uh, Shweta, anyone wants to share next? Yes, yeah, Shweta. Much. Yeah, so uh, oh, I'm also going to listen only largely today. Okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, one thing I want yeah. to uh, say is that uh, uh, this is very profound, especially the uh, lines which you know you've marked manifold uh, choices which we can make and which despite their apparent insignificance are always of great importance so yes uh, uh, you know like uh, this so uh, slowly uh, now i understand and uh, you know like uh, how it is there anyway uh, but you know uh, uh, i mean uh, mostly when you are in that space you do get it, you know, like if you see that uh, they are like actually insignificant, these small, small things, uh, like a uh, simple thing, like, you know, if I'm making tea in the kitchen and suddenly when you change your energy and, you know, you think of the divine and, you know, you engage in such insignificant things, uh, you know, the energy, the quality of that experience changes. So this, this, uh, you know, I understand now and, uh, also, uh, I think the right way of putting it is I uh, observe it uh, more frequently now. Yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yes, beautiful. Yes, thank you, Shweta. 
I yes, Jackie, please. I just want to say that I'm thankful that I made a choice for me to finally join back. <laughs> and uh, and what a beautiful prayer. Uh, so I think uh, I'm going to listen and uh, get back, pull myself back into you know. As uh, you know, we call the stories. I'm trying to pull myself back to this. Okay. Yes. Path. Great. Okay. I'm yeah. glad I made a choice today. <laughs> yeah. Great. All right. So um. Yeah. So then, yes, Luba, please. Uh, hi, Monica. Just yes. here. Yes, Jishori. Yes, please. So. Uh, since already people have shared, I will just add on to that thought, some of the reflections uh, which I felt. One is, as uh, Seneca said, uh, you, are your ch you are the choices that you make. And it came up very clearly when I read this, when I read this prayer. And uh, as others said, I also felt that it is very profound. We do not think Mostly, we do not think when we make the choices, when we exert our decisions, that how it is going to impact us or others. But the question is whether we are making any choices, and probably that is what Mother wants to teach us, that she is making that prayer, that how consciously we can make any choice. And the second thing is when we are making any choice, any, any uh, decision that we are taking, as many of us are working, many of us are, have a different life. So we, we should understand that whenever, which in modern Western psychology or philosophy, they are saying being purposeful. When we are making any choice, are we being purposeful? Which means are we making consciously a decision which is aligned with our goals? If it is not so, it will be, it will not help us. Also, another thing I want to refer here, through our mind, we can never know what is right or wrong. In our course of life, we have seen that we have taken some decisions which we felt perfectly rational, logical, and right at one point of time. And later, it turned out to be extremely foolish. And as Mother has said, that probably it created some karma, which we wanted to come out of it. And it's very difficult to come out. So our mind, and that is what, uh, if we ask, see mother, if we see uh, texts from other uh, spiritual people, I always see that they say, when you seek from the divine anything, do not seek anything. Seek only the positive aspects of sadhana, like bhakti, as for psychic aspiration, uh, faith in the guru. Because when you ask something, it may so happen that it may get granted. And once it gets granted, it will be become more difficult for you because you do not know what is right for you. And I will give you two simple examples. So one is normally what we know, like when we take any decision, we want to take a decision, uh, let's say to further our interest in a field which we are comfortable with, in a field which we know. Now, Ashram in Sri Ashram, the handmade paper department, there used to be one gentleman, Anurakta. He was British. He used to stay in Africa. When he came to Ashram first, and mother said that you will work in the handmade paper department or you will head the handmade paper department at some point of time. And the funny thing is, he did not know anything about handmade paper department. But surprisingly, he learned the trade and he managed the department very, very ably for many years. We know now uh, the department is a testimony of his uh, skill. And so this is beyond the normal logic that somebody who did not know anything about handmade paper, mother is asking that person to work in the handmade paper. This is not always. In certain times, she is putting people in skills and uh, work aligned to their interest as well as skills. But this is a case, and which means we do not know what what we do not know what is good for us or right for us. Hence, it is meaningless to ask or to ask something from the divine which we feel to be right. And that's why Mother is saying, unite, try to unite your will with the divine will. And how we can do that once we our aspiration is perfect, 
once we are open to them, open to the divine with our bhakti, to our faith, we receive that guidance. Another thing I also wanted to share, and this is uh, regarding Ramakrishna Dev. So what, what had happened is, Rakhal Maharaja, Swami Brahmananda, when he was uh, young, I mean, Brahmachari, when he was going through this roads in Calcutta, he saw some one coin was lying. He picked it up and then he then he thought, what will I do? He kept it down and then then he went to Dakshinasha temple and uh, he met Ram Krishna Dev. And Ram Krishna Dev knew this has happened. And Ram Krishna Dev asked in a very, very simple way, he said, if you don't eat fish, why you have to go to fish market? And that is exactly what Mother is saying here. What Ram Krishna Dev is saying is about the goal. If you don't eat fish, you do not need to go to fish market. And that is what Mother is saying that take a decision aligned with your inner interest. For, though we do not know, aligned with your inner interest. If it is not so, don't, don't impose upon yourself. And second thing I would also like to state here is, see, we may feel that what does, what does mother mean? Does that mean to say, say that we will take a decision or we will make a choice without understanding? But here, if we read mother's work, we, we know that later she said that reason should not be abandoned very early in the path. Reason should be your master. That is, when you take any decision, reason should be your master till you have a spiritual guidance or a psychic guidance, which you know for sure that it can guide you better. So till that point, reason has to be your master and you have to make choices which you feel to be, which you feel that it is best aligned with your own inner goal, uh, which seems to you reasonable and rational and offer the, both the outcome as well as the path to the divine. I think this is what would be my reflection on this. Yes, beautiful. Thank you, Jishnuji. Thank you so much. Yeah, so uh, I'll share a few things. Uh, I think much has been shared already. Many, many beautiful reminders for all of us. I'll just add on uh, to this elaboration. I'll read first, I think what, whatever we are reading today, uh, reflecting upon today, is also very much in alignment with the right attitude taken in every situation. What is the right, as I think one of you was sh sharing the highest, uh, Rashmi ji, I, I perhaps, you know, the highest possible consciousness. Am I operating right now from that? So mother also talks about uh, this, uh, she uses the phrase right attitude. So I'll read a few lines from her. Maybe that will just add on to the, the importance of the right attitude and then share a few things later. So Mother shares uh, in question and answers 1929-31. I even go so far as to affirm that in the zone of immediate influence of each one, the right attitude not only has the power to turn every circumstance to advantage, but can change the very circumstance itself. I think that's the power of operating from the highest consciousness, highest possible uh, attitude that I can take in any moment. And then she shares an example, a very interesting example that, for instance, when a, I'm sure some of us have read it, when a man comes to kill you, if you remain in the ordinary consciousness and get frightened out of your wits, he will most probably succeed in doing what he came for. If you rise a little higher and though full of fear, call for the divine help, he may just miss you, doing you a slight injury. If, however, you have the right attitude and the full consciousness, I think what Jishnuji was just talking about, the faith in the divine will, the connection with the divine will, the full consciousness of the divine presence everywhere around you, he will not be able to lift even a finger against you. Uh, I think this also reminds me one story from which was retold by Manoj Das, uh, where he talks of these two friends, Vipul and Vijan. I think I shared earlier also when they go to meet a hermit who is a, a foreteller who can uh, tell your destiny. Uh, if, you know, they meet uh, that foreteller and they say, okay, now that we are here in your heart, please tell us something about our own future. 
so uh, earlier he is hesitant and then they force and compel so he says okay now i'll say something so to vipul one of the fellows he says that you will become a king very soon you will get a lot of uh, property and become a king you will have a kingdom and to the other one he says that you will go you are going to get killed very soon vijan so they go back home and then slowly things change times change and vipul says okay now that i have i'm going to become a king uh, let me you know be he becomes very arrogant his attitude changes vijan knowing that he's going to die he says that okay whatever life is remaining with me let me serve the divine let me do the highest possible that i can so he changes his attitude completely vijan vipul also changes but he changes for the worse so after some time since they are both friends vipul says that okay let us go to find a land for my kingdom so they both go and they find a like a big piece of land and they begin to dig there and while they are digging they get a pot of gold and uh, the moment they are ready to uh, do it in half half and going to take it home a robber comes and a thief kind of comes and he has a knife and he strikes uh, one of them vipul while vijan is more stronger so he tries to defend vipul and he tries to trying to protect vipul so he is stronger and he is able to uh, you know push the robber away and the robber goes away while vijan gets a little scratch on his neck now they both go home half half pot of gold and after again a long time they see that nothing really is happening you know vijan is not dying and uh, vipul is not becoming king so they think that okay let us go back and ask the hermit so they go back and the hermit says that looks into their eyes and he says that like uh, the moment i told you you changed your consciousness and you become even you became in a even burst telling vipul and that's why instead of a kingdom you only got a half of a pot pot of gold while vijan since he changed his attitude again completely uh, towards the higher he instead of getting killed he got just a scratch on the neck uh, from that robber i think there is one other incident where uh, some again a disciple of uh, sri aurobindo somebody who came to talk to sri aurobindo that he got something some accident in the leg or something i remember where uh, sri aurobindo says that it could have actually you know killed you and you were just saved it just gave you a little fracture in the leg or something so it really is amazing Uh, first of all you know you one cannot stress it enough to be more conscious of our acts of our speech of our thoughts feelings where are we operating from and i think that whole journey is just to become more and more conscious more and more conscious and not to be ruled by our patterns tendencies and not to really uh, you know kind of defend those patterns even if i have committed a mistake can i now be sincere and Uh, admit that yes it was not from the highest possible state that i was operating i think that sincerity really takes us a long long way so um yeah i'll just add on a few more points uh, after this right attitude i think just wanted to stress upon this linking of personal will to the divine will i think that has to be done every moment um what jishnu ji was sharing you know linking of the personal will to the divine will total acceptance of whatever life presents to me and then what is the best attitude that i can take uh, what in front of whatever life has given me right now yeah and mother also talks about this uh, urge to grow towards life that even in forms like plants and little sprouts and you know uh, forms which are not really very conscious mother says that there is an urging towards the sun that in a forest all the trees are urged to move towards the sun you know, grow towards the sun so uh, this urge is there starting from a seed starting from a sprout or a little plant and this urge towards light and towards more and more purity is also there in uh, human beings i think we must uh, more and more follow this urge toward towards lightness and perfection and purity because it is something which is very innate to our nature and uh, the other thing that was i uh, coming to me is that you know we talk about cause and effect and it seems to us that cause is separated from the effect in time like today i do this and after some time i will have the repercussions 
while also although that is true for example if today i begin to have a very bad attitude in my own self and that bad attitude continues then slowly i manifest a disease in my body now although it is a matter of time also but i think it's also instantaneous because when we say karm and phal you know cause and effect uh, so karm hi phal hai i believe because the moment i am acting out from a desire desirous state from a vital state from a very confused state my very being itself feels poisoned instantly it's not that i am really having a beautiful time operating from desires or the vital or you know whatever conflicted state of mind i may be in so there is also an instantaneous effect uh, which is not separated in time while that's true that we then follow a law of determinism that if i continue to have these suppressed negative emotions for a long time and i continue to be a puppet of them then they also manifest as a disease for example you know yeah. maybe two days i am living in a stress so i manifest a migraine or a headache for a long time if it goes on then it manifests as chronic illnesses you know? so yeah just wanted to add that there is also an instantaneous effect that we don't really feel nice about it you know, instantly yeah and if one can be conscious immediately one can see that okay my heart is burning something is wrong you know i am not really operating from the highest possible state maybe the ego has taken over again you know and we feel it we feel that burning and uh, that unease in the body yeah and then i also wanted to you know because uh, it's another fact that we talk about becoming more and more conscious becoming operating from the highest possible state of consciousness but it, i think it's also important to address that since we are journeying from desire soul to true soul since we are journeying from ignorance to light then can i use also all the possible occasions where i am not in, not really sincere because that will happen you know it will happen that i am not sincere most of the times when when we begin this journey so what to do with those moments where i have really failed i have really acted out of ego i have acted out of my desire soul i have acted out of the worst possible state of consciousness uh, shall i feel guilty about it shall i be in shame about it what to do because i think that really concerns me because that's that's where our journey lies because we are not really perfect although we are moving towards perfection we are moving towards the divine but we are becoming uh, the divine or becoming more conscious in steps very little steps and five steps we take and 10 steps we take back many a times right so what to do with these worst possible failures coming out of vital coming out of desires i think can we make these our stepping stones so mother says that if an accident has happened it has precisely happened so that you can become more conscious of your movements so if a failure has ha happened in my life if now i have landed myself into a consequence or a determinism or a suffering can i now learn from it you know and not go too much in guilt and shame that why did i act you know mother also shares in one of the prayers and meditations that many a times my acts are not consecrated to thee although i would want to but they are not consecrated i go i deplore it for a moment i go into guilt and shame a bit but then i delve into the i plunge into the depths of ocean you know i go into solace of the divine mother of the divine and there i find my peace that let it be a step forward and mother also again and again she talks about moving forward no matter how many mistakes i may have made can i now move forward you know can i forgive myself forgive others and move forward without too much trapping myself into guilt and shame of my insincerity because insincerity will stay for a long time it will it is just that i will become conscious of my insincere actions in bits and pieces more and more more and more that yes i do act insincerely and mother also shares that people who are absolute people who are really sincere to a greater degree they would really see that they are not sincere all the time you know so it's really uh, very demanding and hard to be absolutely sincere all the times and we must not bash ourselves that we are not sincere we must rather use that insincerity as a stepping stone towards a march forward yeah so just knowing that we are coming from desire soul and it will pop up again and again 
but the journey has to go on towards the true soul of a psychic being can we make this movement every you know, every now and then can we make this movement yeah and mother also shares that many many days you are happy you know tell yourself that you are sincere that you are completely given to the divine sis you have given yourself to the divine and then there are many many days you will find yourself unhappy mother says just you know in inverted commas i read this that tell yourself that if i am unhappy i am insincere so some or the other demand and expectation from a life situation from a person from your own self has a reason and the sincerity just to offer yourself to the divine has gone some demand has a reason to which i have given myself again and hence the cause for unhappiness so if we can catch uh, this movement in us i think that's again talking about becoming more and more conscious and i think Al alukda also shares in one of his talks that even when you're meeting a friend you know doing as shweta was sharing making tea little little acts luba was sharing very insignificant acts can i put a spark of true consciousness there you know can i just put a drop of uh, devotion there can i put a drop of self give self giving and self offering there uh, putting my expectations and demands aside for a while i think that really uh, goes a far far way yeah and again and again we become unconscious but then the journey is to become more and more conscious no matter how many times we may fail into or fall into unconsciousness so fate uh, i believe uh, talking about fate you know and mother also shares that uh, fate is fixed only in the sense that our choices in the past are determining our present you know this was uh, i just copied this from the talk i think this was very relevant found this very relevant that fate is fixed only in the sense that our choices in the past that we have made they are determining our present but equally our choices in the present right now whatever i am choosing as all of you shared you know so beautifully that whatever attitude i choose right now our choices in the present he says can either cancel the entire thing and open ourselves to a new dimension and direction of fate and a new kind of play of forces so i think this is a very powerful opportunity that is given to us kind of a free will i would say that each moment no matter how far an extreme i may have gone in worst possible case in my past can i now begin a new life can i now each moment become more conscious of this free will that is there with me make a choice as luba was pointing in the beginning making that conscious choice that would i now i see a movement of ego rising but would i want to follow it or would i want to choose the highest possible which is of course not the ego consciousness you now settle down a little in the being maybe uh, remember the mother and allow myself to open and be receptive uh, to whatever the divine will is and to whatever appears the simplest and easiest and lightmost way and the best possible way for all in that situation and many a times this you know the making this decision is very tricky many a times very tricky especially when the vital is in front you know because vital is so pushy and it really wants to make itself heard so in those moments uh, the decision to make this conscious choice that yes i see the vital uprising i see that it is pushing me and i know that i have to put this apart and really be supple and open in my decision and so that it's uh, beneficial for each one of us but those challenges i think they just make us stronger and stronger we also recognize the force of the vital in those moments that how strong vital impulse can come a desirous impulse can come where it can make itself aggressively heard while the voice of the psychic being is really very modest and not that aggressive so in those moments i think the true challenge lies yeah uh, so that's what i wanted to point out share yeah if there is anything else coming to any one of you please uh, share
Mm -hmm. It was wonderful, uh, Dr. Monica. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Anything anyone wants to add on? I think there was one uh, talk by Dr. Devabrat Sahani uh, from Namaha, which I heard. It was a beautiful uh, talk where he talk, uh, he was just talking about really day-to-day -day, uh, life things, you know, that we go through. That how to, if you really want to progress towards beauty, you know, and then offer your effort towards beauty. You know, that mother also talks about looking at any ugly movement in yourself. And we all know whenever movements are ugly within, we all know. There is a knowing that recognizes. So uh, he was actually pointing out that if you see an ugly movement, put effort towards making that movement beautiful. So I think this is a process of, as we become more and more conscious, can I now put effort uh, into making my own inner movements more and more beautiful? And not to bash ourselves if ugly movements are there, not to be too judgmental about the movements because they are going to stay as long as the physical consciousness is there, which mother says is it's actually very dark. You know, physical consciousness is a mixture, she says. So as long as the physical consciousness is there, we are going to have the mixture. But am I also ready to sort the mixture out, to recognize what is the voice of the psychic and what is coming from the vital and the impulses and desires? And I think it's a beauty uh, to walk on this path of uh, Mother and Sri Aurobindo. It's really beautiful, no matter how tumultuous and full of turmoil it may be, owing to the vital at times. But then even those phases, I think we can turn to our own progress that can I understand the vital even more? Can I understand the really the dictates that I have been living so far of the vital, thinking that I have been living a right life? So I think it's just pushing us forward and forward uh, towards more and more light and purity. So even the failures, as in Savitri, you know, uh, Sri Aurobindo says that our errors are, are his steps on this way. So even our failures can become beautiful reminders and progressive uh, steps on the way not to really weigh down ourselves with the failures also. Yeah. Okay, so, yeah, if there is anything else, then we can take it, else we can also call it a day here. And I, I would also request uh, if people want to continue, you're most welcome. If you feel that you can, uh, you would like to exit the group or if you want to stay at the in, within the group but not attend, absolutely uh, up to you. If you can just spread around the word, I'll share the poster again. And if there are new people who want to join uh, the next batch on prayers and meditations, then we can just spread our word around for this. Great. Okay, so thank you so much uh, for walking this path together. And thank you all of you for your reflections and time and yeah, insights. Thank you. Thanks all of you. Thank you. It was a wonderful Thank you. journey. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Monica. much. Really, we want to continue. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Bye -bye. Bye, -bye. Yeah. bye. bye. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Bye -bye. So much, yeah. Thank you. Bye bye.